Good morning, Transit. My name is Jackson Leedy, and I am one of our small group leaders here in Transit. And I just want to say a huge welcome to all of you guys who are tuning in for Transit Online, especially if this is your first time engaging with anything Transit related. What today is going to look like is I have a few important announcements to give you, and then we will be listening to the incredible North Point Band. Then our Transit Director, Matt Kinney, will be starting a brand new series called Catch Raves. And finally, we will head to small group where we'll be connecting with them. But what I want to do to kick things off is some of you guys may have noticed this huge thing of Skittles next to me. I don't know about y'all, but Skittles is one of my favorite candies. And the problem with not going anywhere during this break is to eat all of these. Before I do, I want to see how good you guys are at guessing. So what we want to do is for the next minute, you're going to utilize the chat bar and comment your guesses on how many Skittles are in this jar for a minute. Then our North Point page will give us the answer at the end of 60 seconds. And then we'll I'll come back up and have some more announcements for y'all. Are y'all ready? All right. Three, two, one. Man, that was awesome. If you guessed anything close to 200, you were correct. Don't worry if you weren't close. We will for sure be doing more of these in our future. Before we hear our incredible band, I have some important announcements for you. First, if you're not already following us on Instagram, at transit uh, underscore NP, and turn on our post notifications, we will be doing so many things throughout our social media in the coming weeks. Even some things where you guys will have a chance to win free stuff. Second, what we want you to do is to stay engaged through this YouTube channel this week. Every week at 9.30 and 11, a video will be uploaded and there will be the normal transit fun of games and giveaways like we did today and dive into messages as we always do in small groups. The third and final thing we want you guys to do is stay engaged with your small groups. Your small group leaders will be reaching out to you throughout this break, but one of the best things to do for each other is to check in on one another via personal text or whatever app y'all use as a group to communicate. What we're gonna do next is we're going to turn it over to our incredible North Point band, who will be leading us in a few songs, which is so cool because this would be different for en any in-person transit. But it's incredibly cool, especially doing this virtually. The reason why we are spending time listening to this music is because we know right now life seems crazy and all over the place. And sometimes the best thing to do in these moments is to know and recognize the truth that we have a God that is always good and he is always moving in the good and the bad times. So we're gonna turn it over to Jamie and Taylor and then Matt will be starting our brand new series called Catchphrase.
share a song with you called Waymaker, that God is our Waymaker. The song has a, a lot of speaking to God. In fact, it opens with the line that you are here. So I want to pause here and actually wherever you are, on your sofa, um, in your computer room, wherever you may be, I want to pause for a second here. And uh, while the band just plays some music, give you a chance to actually pray your own way of saying, God, you're here with me. Let's pray for a minute. God, we know that you hear us from our heart, we pray to you, we ask you to meet us in this place, speak to us.
What's true for all of you who are watching, no matter what may be causing us to feel anxious, if it's not being around the people we love most, like our friends or our small groups, if it's that feeling of boredom taking over, or maybe it's just stress of not knowing what the next couple of weeks are gonna look like. What's true is that we can rest in our Father's hands and leave all of our worries in His hands as well. If you come to Transit every week, or if this is your first time engaging with Transit, what we want you to know is that one, you belong here and you can find peace with God. What's true is we have a God that is so loving and He cares about you. And that's why I'm so personally excited to have Matt share part one of Catch Rays with you guys. So take a look at this video. Have you guys ever played this game? If you haven't played Catch Race, you guys are missing out. This is hands down one of the most competitive games that has ever been created. And honestly, this is a great quarantine activity to play with your family, even though games with families don't go great sometimes. Basically how this game works is that you're in teams and you're describing a word or a phrase to your teammates and trying to get them to guess what that is without saying the word or a phrase. It's so challenging, especially when you don't know the word or phrase. For example, I'm playing this game with my family a couple years ago, and the word Tokyo is on the screen. Now, I didn't pay much attention in social studies in school, but apparently Tokyo is a city in Japan, and I had no idea. I just froze, and the timer went off on me, and I lost the game for my team, and they were not happy about it at all. Anyways, this is a fun and great game. The reason why it's the name of our series that we're going to be in for the next couple weeks is because there are words and phrases that other people say or maybe you hear that you don't know the meaning of them. For example, when you were a child, there were words and phrases that were said to you or around you that you hadn't learned yet. And I'm sure there's things that your parents say right now that don't make any sense to you at all. See, that's not only true with everyday life, but that could be true with our faith as well, or when it comes to Christianity itself. Maybe there are things you've heard growing up, or when it comes to God or Christianity, that when you hear it at first, it doesn't make any sense to you. Or maybe when you read things in this book, the Bible, when you read it, it just doesn't make any sense when you first see it. Sometimes the Bible can seem just like bedtime stories that you heard as a kid. We get confused about whether Jesus was the guy who healed people or some crazy magician. A lot of times, if we're being honest, we can look at this book called the Bible and get confused about what's in the Bible. There's a lot of reasons for this. For one, it's just a big book with a lot of pages and some words that don't make sense and are kind of hard to understand. Maybe for you, this is confusing because you may not know where to start. Like the book is split into two, so do I read the first part or the second part? Maybe there are things in the Bible that might be hard for you to believe. And so for you, you wonder if God is really real and Jesus was who he said he was, and this whole Christianity thing is legit, which is totally fair to think. See, for a second, I want us to think a little bit differently. Because for a second, let's look at who Jesus really is. Because what we think about Jesus ultimately determines how we understand and read the Bible. Sometimes when we open up the pages of the New Testament and see all these things that Jesus was doing, it can sometimes be overwhelming. We can look at all these crazy miracles and all these people that he helped and even dying and then coming back to life. Like, let's just take that last one. That in and of itself is crazy for us to wrap our minds around. And sometimes the stories about Jesus feel like folk tales and bedtime stories. Jesus can sometimes feel like a character in a fairy tale. We often forget that he was a real person. But my question is, why is he so important? Like if all these things in the Bible were not true, then why is the Christian faith so popular? We can have doubts of the Bible because of the stories in the Bible. So how can we prove that Jesus was who he claimed to be and how can the Bible be trusted? I would love for us to look at a passage that tells us a little bit about the men who wrote the New Testament and what they were going through as they wrote their letters and accounts of Jesus' life. There was actually a time where the disciples who followed Jesus were in Jerusalem after Jesus had ascended to heaven. And the people in Jerusalem at this time, especially those who didn't like Jesus' teaching, were angry at the disciples for continuing to preach. Here's what the government officials told the disciples. They said, we gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said, yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. So as we can see, the government is not happy whatsoever with the disciples for doing this. But Peter, who we talked about last week, speaks up and says something so incredible. And it's why we can trust not only who Jesus was, but how we can trust the letters in the Bible as well. Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than human beings. 
The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on a cross. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior, that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. This is so important. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Life was not easy for the guys who followed Jesus. They were threatened, beaten, and in most cases killed for what they said about Jesus. Now, if they were making this up, they would have gone to these great lengths to protect a lie. As far as worldly fame and prestige, they gained nothing. However, they saw these things happen. They didn't pick up the stories from someone else. They saw Jesus die and saw him rise again. And with that sort of conviction, they couldn't help but spread the word of Jesus' offer of salvation. Here are the options that the disciples may have done. One, they all got together and made this stuff up. But if that was the case, why did they suffer for it? Two, they all got together and were mistaken about the same details. That also seems highly unlikely. Number three, they all wrote independently on their own and got the same details wrong, also unlikely, or they, all that they wrote was true. Have you ever thought about it this way? The truth is, is that nothing in the past can be 100% proven. You can only take the evidence and conclude the most likely answer. For instance, I can't prove to you that I went to a particular concert, football game, or movie. Even if I showed you my ticket stub and a t-shirt from that event, you could argue that I bought those off eBay. Even if I had a photo, you could argue that I photoshopped it. Even if I brought in people who were with me, you could argue that I paid those people to back up my story. However, the more logical conclusion is that I really went to that game, concert, or movie. To document Jesus' life, we have four different authors that tell the same exact story. We have portions of the book of John found in Egypt from AD 125. We had complete versions of the Gospels by AD 250, and historians are jealous of the quantity and quality of the documentation we have to support the Gospels. Moreover, the writers were willing to die for their statements about who Jesus was and what he did. Therefore, the most logical conclusion is that not only is Jesus a real person, but he was significant. And we can have confidence in who Jesus was based off the eyewitnesses who helped write the Bible. So this book that we talk about all the time is not a collection of fairy tales or cute bedtime stories. No, it's a, it's a series of historical accounts of events that really happened. The practical application of this is that one of, if not the most important question that can revolutionize your faith is who is Jesus to you personally? Because if he's a liar, then the disciples were insane to go to great lengths to document these things. If he was crazy, then the people for thousands of years have been following a lunatic. Or if the people who wrote the New Testament were eyewitnesses, then Jesus is our savior. He is God and he is the hope for our world. My hope for our small group time is we can talk about who Jesus is to us personally, but also a time and place where you can express your questions or your doubts about God. And if you're interested in learning more about who God or Jesus is, there are some great ways to do that. One, it's maybe opening up the New Testament and getting to know more about the life of Jesus and his ministry on earth. A fantastic app too, since we already know you'll be on your phone during this break, is the YouVersion Bible app. On here, it has some really great devotionals and reading plans. And lastly, a couple weeks ago here in transit, we created our very own Spotify playlist with some really amazing songs that talk about who Jesus is. These are really great resources to use, especially because what a better time to learn and discover who Jesus really is to us personally. Let me pray for us before we break into small groups. God, thank you so much for today. Father, I want to thank you for your grace and your love and your faithfulness for every single person who is watching this today. God, it's because of that love that we're able to have this life, that we're able to learn what a relationship with you looks like. And God, we are so thankful for everything and every single person that you have placed around us during this uncertain time. God, I pray for all of our students that during this time we can lean into what a relationship with you looks like and we can truly discover and understand what your son Jesus has done for us. Father, it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right, y'all, we are going to break into small groups. Y'all go ahead and go to Zoom and wait for your leader. I will see you guys next week.